Good morning, I'm Markay Levins. Now I want to present to you the topic of social media. Everyone in here knows what social media is, right? Yes. Okay. Social media is defined as the forms of media that allow people to communicate and share information through the internet or mobile phones. Over 2.77 billion people have social media accounts, with more than a million of them being users active every day. Now, looking at the stimulus source, Edward Kessler's, um, as he writes, um, Social Media and the Movement of Ideas, he says, the social media has become an important part of our lives in an incredibly short period of time. Its impact depends on the people who use it and how they use it. Now, if you go deeper into his study about social media and its impact on society, you see that there are downfalls and upbringings to social media, but he focuses on some of the downfalls, and, that, and through my research, I, I looked through the story of Sadie Riggs. Sadie Riggs was a loving, helping 15-year-old girl that dreamed of becoming a firefighter or a lawyer or a veterinarian. She was very passionate about drawing, spending time outside with her dogs in a small, time of, a small town of Bitworth, Pennsylvania. In her final year of life, the school freshman's biggest obstacle was bullying from her peers. Her mother said, the taunting started in the school hallways but became inescapable. Sadie was tormented on Facebook, Instagram, messaging platforms like Kick, where classmates would tell her to kill herself. On June 19th, Sadie couldn't take the bullying anymore, and just after two weeks of bullying, Sadie committed suicide. Now, with the understanding from Edward Kessler's social media and the movement of ideas and how people use social media, and this story about Sadie Riggs, the sad story of her of ending her life, it led me to the research question, to what extent does social media contribute to the teen suicide rates? Now first, my claims. My research has led me to make the two claims. Social media leads to the negative mental state of teens, and social media leads to a higher suicide rate. Now first, looking at it from a medical standpoint, you'll see the mental health effects. One study of the University of P Pittsburgh found a correlation between time spent scrolling through social media apps and negative image feedback that comes to teens. People who spend more time on social media had a 22% um, risk of reporting eating disorders and body image disorders um, compared to their peers who spend less time on social media. People who spend time on social media all day, like check their phones back to back to see alerts, they have 26 times the risk of receiving these um, negative impacts on them. And as seen in the picture above from Clay Behavioral Health Center, it shows that all of these things can happen to you if you spend so much time on social media. In 2015, a study from Clinical Philosophical Science Journal said that in 2015, 36% of teens who felt sad planned suicide. As shown in the graph reported from the Pediatric Academic Societies, in 2015, the number of suicides from 15 to 17 year olds was 50.4%. 50.4 teens killed themselves from social media and how it negatively impacts them. Now, there is a current solution to this um, problem that's spiraling around, would be parents restricting their child's social media use. Although only 39% of parents check their kids' phones regularly, leaving 61% of kids to be on social media as long as they want. This solution isn't very effective because it could lead to more teens taking their life and that's what we don't want to have. Now, this has led me to my optimal solution, which would be social media platforms could have better enforcement of keyword blockers, such as the excessive use of profanity, use of fighting words, and words that can indicate bullying. Um, limitations to this would be unlimited new accounts can be created. Many, um, once you're flat, my solution to this also was that if you use those prof profanity, if you use bullying words, your account will be flagged, and once your account is flagged two times, then your account will be deleted, deleted ultimately. So a limitation would be unlimited new accounts can be created. So once your flag gets flagged, your account gets flagged and it gets deleted, and you, you can make another social media account. And so that wouldn't really stop the issue because if you really, people that want to bully, they can keep doing the same thing over and over again. Secondly, it would be hard to detect if these words are offensive. Um, Many people joke around on social media, they play games, but some are actually serious. So people that are over these social media platforms, it would be hard for them to know if this is actual bullying or maybe if they're playing around. But once these words are detected, the platforms um, can try their best to fix the issue. Now, 
my um, kind of claim to this would be that if social media platforms can find ways to track your location, use filters, and tag your friends, it shouldn't be that much of a stretch for them to detect these words effectively. In conclusion, with the implementation of my optimal solution, I feel that mental health and suicidal thoughts of teens will be decreased with um, my solution. And as long as we have teens that are trying to treat everyone with respect, we can use social media to our advantage and be positive. Thank you. What questions do you have? Okay, first question. How valid and reliable are the sources you've used? How do you know in which sources didn't work? Um, the sources that I use would be, I used a lot of .orgs and I used EBSCO so to make sure that my sources were reliable. And the sources that I didn't use were .coms, many of .coms because I wasn't really sure if the um, information was added up. So I just used more of .orgs and EBSCO to help me so I can know that my sources were credible. Okay, and second question. If you had more time, what additional research would you conduct related to this issue? If I had more time, I would look at more of the mental health aspect of it because many people don't report the um, issues that come from the social media, so there was very little um, research on it. But I would like to go further in depth about how social media affects the teens' mental health. Thank you, ma'am.